In today's tutorial, we are going to have a bit of fun looking at the flexibility of JavaScript. Though some consider JavaScript's flexibility as a liability, I like it. So we are going to look at a simple problem and several approaches to solving it. It should be fun and I think you will learn something. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. A year or two ago, I picked up this book by Angus Kroll. And by the way, I'll include a link to this book in the description. Now this book is probably the most unique book on coding I have ever read. He takes several well-known authors and show how they might solve a JavaScript problem based on what he knows about their writing style. It's very interesting. But he makes this comment at the start of the book that I want to read to begin with. He says, JavaScript has plenty in common with natural language. It is at its most expressive when combining simple idioms in original ways. Its syntax, which is limited yet flexible, promotes innovation without compromising readability. And then he goes on to say, Natural language has no dominant paradigm and neither does JavaScript. Developers can select from a grab bag of approaches, procedural, functional, and object-oriented, and blend them as appropriate. Most ideas can be expressed in multiple ways, and many JavaScript programmers can be identified by their distinct coding style. So, I love the flexibility of JavaScript. I love to see the different ways that JavaScript problems can be solved. And we're going to look at one of those. Now here's the problem. It's simple. We want to create a function that accepts a year and then returns the century for that year. So if 1701 is passed in, it should return 18 for the 18th century. If 1700 is passed in, it should return 17. So the 17th century is 1601 to 1700. Now, this function should accept any date. So, for example, year 100, and it should return the correct century. Now, this was a simple exercise I found on codesignal.com. And I thought the different solutions were interesting and educational. So let's get started. Now, what I have here in the JavaScript file is the start of the function. This is what we're going to call it. And then I have several tests. They're just console log statements here and they pass in different years. Notice we have a year 45, we have a year 100, we have 1700, and then we have 2001. And so it gives us a good variety of years to test with. Now this is what it should return, 119, 20, 17, 21, and one. So that's what we wanna check against. Now, First, one approach that could be taken to this problem is by using the string methods available in JavaScript to work with this and to retrieve something that would represent the century. So let's try that first. Let's use strings. And so I want to first declare a parts variable. And this is going to be an array, and here's why because we're going to set that equal to the year divided by 100. I'm dividing it by 100 so that I can get a number with a decimal point or one without a decimal point. Then I want to convert that to a string. And once I've converted that to a string, I want to split On the period so that, that creates an array if there is a decimal point in the number there's two parts now in that array there's part zero should be the century that we may need to manipulate and part one shows the number of years beyond that so let's look at how we might then determine what we're returning so if parts one, if that exists, that's what we're checking. If that even exists, then we know 
that we need to add one to the century because if there is anything above zero zero then it's the next century and so we will return I'm going to convert it back to a number so that we're returning numbers I'm going to return that plus one pretty simple let me convert that part to a number. There we go. That's what we want. Now, if there is nothing in parts one, then we simply want to return part zero without modifying at all, because that will be the correct century. So you see how we're doing that? So if we divide this, basically with 45 is going to get 0 0.45. We split that and then we see if there's something exists in part one, which is the second part. And yes, 45 is there. So we take what is in part zero, which is a zero, and we add one, and that gives us the first century. That's how it's going to work with all of these, okay? So let's just give that a try. Remember, we're looking for 1, 19, 20, 17, 21, and 1. So let me go ahead and refresh, display the console, 1, 19, 20, 17, 21, and 1. So that one worked for us. That looks like that worked fine. And that was an approach using a string. Now let's do another approach using a string, but a slightly different approach. So I use the split method of strings. You could also use the substring method of strings. So substring allows you to extract part of a string and that's kind of what we're after here. So let's look at how we might do that one. So in this case, I'm going to declare another variable, just converting the year to a string. That's all I'm going to do there. And then let's do a second variable, and this is going to be the century. And so we're going to set that equal to the string year, and then we're going to take a substring of it. Now, if we want the century, that's the first two numbers of the year, right? So we could do a substring of 0, 2. However, let's think about this for a minute. This is not going to work for 45, and it's not going to work for 100 either. In 45, we don't want to get anything. We want it to be nothing for the century because we're going to have to add one to it to make it the first century. Here, we want to get just one, and then we're not going to add anything to it. So if we're doing a substring of two, it's going to get 10. Here, it's going to get 45. That, so that's not going to work. So how are we going to do this? Well, here's how we can do that. We can do the string dot length minus two. See how that's going to work for us? So in the case of 45 minus two, it's going to go zero comma zero. That's what we're going to do the substring of. All right. Now I'm going to use regular expression. So one more variable here. And this is going to be a simple regular expression. It's going to look for anything that has two zeros at the end, the end of the string. And why are we looking for two zeros? Well, if it has two zeros at the end, we know we can simply return cent. If it has something other than that, then we need to add one to it before we return it. So here's our if statement. We're just going to take the regular expression, do a test on it. And what we're going to test is year or year str. We could do either one. And if that evaluates to true, if you're not familiar with regular expression test method, basically it evaluates to true or false. So if that evaluates to true, meaning there are two zeros on the end, then we simply want to return cent. And I'm going to convert it to a number. I just want to keep everything the same with how we do these functions, that it returns a number. Else, we return, converting it to a number again, plus 1. All right, let's save that, see if we get the same numbers coming from that one. There we go, get the same thing, 1, 19, 20, 17, 21, and 1. 
So that example used a regular expression. I also used the substring method of strings. So using strings again, but a little bit different approach. All right, now let's use numbers. Let's, since this is a number that's being passed in, let's use a number to solve this. So one way we could do that is we can check to see if the module of year divided by 100 is equal to 0. Now remember, the modulo operator returns a remainder. So if that is equal to 0, what does that tell us about the century? Well, what it tells us if we don't is that we don't need to add 1 to it. However, how do we get the century using math? What can we do to get the century using math. Well, when we work with a string, the first example, we divided it by 100 because that left just the century portion of the number on the left side of the decimal point. Well, we can do a similar thing with math. We can divide year by 100. However, that's going to return a decimal number. So how can we get rid of what's on the right side of the decimal point? Well. There's a couple ways to do that, but one is with the math.floor method. Basically, that's going to return the century. Now, if we need to add one to that, we would do the exact same thing as we have here, except we would add one. Like that. All right, let's save that and see if we get the same results. And we do. So that is a solution using numbers. Now, we can make this much cleaner. This can be a lot cleaner than what we have here. And in fact, this is the solution that I prefer because it is so clean once we clean it up a little bit more. We can eliminate this whole if statement if you think about it. We can just eliminate all of the if statement and we can simply return this type of thing. I'm going to add 99 to it. Let's see, let me get my parentheses correct here. All right, so we're going to add 99 to it and divide it by 100. And we're still taking the floor of that. Now, why does that work? Well, if we think about this, if we add 99 to this, it's 144. We divide that by 100, we get 1 when we do math.floor. Math.floor is just going to go to the lowest integer number. It's not rounding. It's just getting rid of everything on the right side of the decimal place and going to the lowest integer number. Okay. And so by adding 99 and going to using math.floor, that works for us. Okay. Let's just save that and double check that. Oh, I got parentheses issues. Oh, yeah, got one too many there. All right, check that again. There we go, 119, 20, 17, 21. All right, now this can even be cleaner. And this, I think, is the, the best solution right here. Let's use ceiling, math.ceiling. Math.ceiling does the opposite of floor it raises it and we can do that and get rid of adding the 99. It's the same concept but it's using math.ceiling. So for example, if we divide 45 by 100, we get 0.45, we do the ceiling of that, it returns 1. 18.88 here. We do the ceiling of that, it returns 19. If we do 1700, it returns 17. That's the ceiling of that because it's 0, 0.00. So that's how that one's going to work. And this is the cleanest solution. Let's go ahead and save that. Let me refresh and we get the same numbers there. All right, so that was a solution I like best, but I want to show one more, one more solution. I, I wonder as I'm looking 
as I was looking at this, can we do this with a loop? So here's a way to do it with a loop. First, I'm going to declare a sent variable, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. And then we're going to start our loop. It's going to be a for loop. Let i equal 0. And we want to go in while i is less than the year that is passed in. And how much are we going to increment i by? Well, by 100. Because what I want to do is I want to use the century to be a counter of how many centuries are in the year. So I'm using the for loop to determine that, to determine how many centuries exist in that year. Here's how we do that. As we move through that for loop, I simply increment cent each time I go through it. And so this will go as long as i is less than the year. So if we pass in 45, the first time through it increments cent to 1. And then the second, it doesn't go a second time through because we add 100 to it and then it's no longer less than the year. So you can see how that would work with the for loop. And then the last thing we do is simply return sent like that. All right, let's refresh. And we get the same set of numbers. So several different approaches in JavaScript that come to the same conclusion. They return the same results. And as I was looking at this problem in codesignal.com, I was amazed at the number of different ways, number of different approaches people took to solve this problem. I tend to lead to the simplest and the solutions that have the least amount of code that need to be entered. But you may have reasons to prefer something else. Either way, it illustrates the flexibility of JavaScript, which I think is one of the nice features of JavaScript. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also, hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.